But first, over the span of the last five years, the giant oil company ExxonMobil has been the single most profitable company in the entire world. ExxonMobil is among the most profitable companies the entire world has ever known. They first became the most profitable company in the world back in 2006. Since then, they have taken that top spot in 2007, in 2008, and again in 2009. This past year was such a great year for Exxon that they made $5 million in profit every single hour, 24 hours a day. Just profit. In addition to making itself into a money-making machine, the likes of which the world has never seen, ExxonMobil has also been really busy lately, making the famed and treasured Yellowstone River in Montana look like this. For a company that has the closest thing the world has ever known to infinite resources, they have infinite money at their disposal. You could not mint money faster than ExxonMobil makes it. For a company that has infinite resources at its disposable, this mess that they have made of the Yellowstone River seems to be beyond their capacity, outside of their grasp. Late Friday night, one of Exxon's oil pipelines burst beneath the Yellowstone River just outside of Billings, Montana. The cause of the rupture is so far unknown, but the result of it is visible as far as the eye can see. 42,000 gallons of crude oil is the estimate. An estimated 1,000 barrels of oil gushed into the river on Friday night, overrunning its banks, and coating everything in sight. Right after the accident happened, Exxon officials estimated that most of the oil released would affect only a 10-mile area surrounding the rupture. They were then forced to acknowledge a day later that the spill would in fact reach beyond that 10-mile stretch. EPA officials are now saying oil has been spotted at least 40 miles away. Yesterday afternoon, an ExxonMobil spokesman told the Associated Press, quote, it's unlikely that there's any oil in the water at this point. Again, that was yesterday afternoon. Here's video from earlier today. That's oil. That's the water. That's oil in the water. During a press conference over the weekend, Exxon's top official at the scene reported that no injured wildlife had been found in the area. Unless bathing in crude oil is a hot new voluntary trend among Montana wildlife, that Exxon claim would also seem to be disproven by photos published by the Billings Gazette of soiled pelicans and turtles. There have also been reports of a dead duck that has turned up since. In terms of the health risks posed by their spill, ExxonMobil confidently reports, quote, we continue to monitor air quality and all previous reports have confirmed no danger to public health. No danger to public health. Everything's fine. Relax, people. Don't overreact. One local resident who lives along the Yellowstone River decided to challenge that claim in person with the president of ExxonMobil Pipeline Company. I know two people in the hospital are ready over this. One person who's passing out last night because of the fumes, and now my wife. And I don't believe that you don't know what's in the oil, what's making people sick. In terms of the air quality around the Yellowstone River right now, which again, Exxon says it has been fastidiously monitoring, another local property owner who lives right alongside the Yellowstone River told the Associated Press, quote, the smell has been enough to gag a maggot. The Associated Press reporter confirming the stank with his or her own nose. In the four days since the oil pipeline ruptured underneath Montana's Yellowstone River, ExxonMobil's public statements of fact have not squared with the actual facts. And even before the spill, I mean, consider the matter of how we got here in the first place. Back in May, just a few weeks ago, Exxon officials shut down this very pipeline over concerns about rising water levels along the river due to recent heavy rain in Montana. They were asked by city officials to assess the risk of operating this pipeline in these high water conditions. After performing that risk assessment, the company decided to restart the pipeline. They said they examined its safety record and decided that any risk from high water in the river was low. They just decided, based on reviewing their own safety record, that actually high water was no big deal for this pipeline. They could handle it. What's believed to have caused this oil spill? High waters in recent weeks that may have exposed the pipeline to debris. ExxonMobil reviewing its own safety record to make that sort of decision is important here because it calls to mind ExxonMobil's safety record. Back in July of last year, federal officials notified Exxon that this particular pipeline was subject to a number of probable violations of the law. Among the regulations Exxon was in apparent violation of emergency response training. 
rules governing the potential corrosion of pipes, and having out-of-date maps and records for this pipeline. Exxon's records apparently included valves on this pipeline that no longer existed. Since the leak was discovered, Exxon says they still haven't even seen the pipe that caused this whole mess in the first place. Exxon's pipeline company president saying, quote, we are very curious about what may have happened at the bottom of the river. They have to be curious about it because they still haven't seen it. Again, ExxonMobil is one of the most profitable companies on planet Earth. Exxon is one of the most profitable companies the Earth has ever known in the whole history of people making profit with companies. And yet, four days after this big oil spill of theirs, they still have no way of seeing the ruptured pipe in question. They say they're very curious about it. What does all of the money in the world buy a company like Exxon in terms of their response capabilities to a spill like this? Uh, there it is. All the money in the world. 45,000 feet of floating boom about eight miles of boom that's been placed in the water and the surrounding areas to try to contain all the oil. Does that rather depressing shot of the boom look familiar to you at all? Yeah, it's the same type of largely ineffective boom that was used during the BP oil spill last year. And if that boom looked familiar back then, it's because that was the same type of largely ineffective boom used 40 years earlier during the Santa Barbara oil spill of 1969. This is the technological level of Exxon's response to a big oil spill in 2011. 45,000 feet of boom. Also, about 2,000 absorbent pads. Cleanup crews can be seen here laying down these pads along the riverbed. What is the company with more resources than any company has ever had? What do they do when their product spills? Hey, you guys have any paper towels? That's pretty much it. Absorbent pads. That's their technology. As ExxonMobil has been proven wrong over and over and over again about this spill over the past four days, and as the governor of Montana rages against this company for not only having caused this disaster, but for the lack of resources on hand so far to respond to it, what the rest of us elsewhere in the country are left with here is, first of all, the specter of the great Yellowstone River, the site of some of the greatest fishing on Earth, this pristine national treasure, befouled to the point where its smell could, what's that quote, it is, is enough to gag a maggot. We're left with that as a nation, and with the sense of awe and wonder that there is a red versus blue, Democratic versus Republican fight in Washington right now, because Democrats want to stop taxpayer subsidies to this industry. Democrats want to stop taxpayer subsidies to the richest companies, the richest industry civilization has ever known. And apparently that is worth fighting over. Joining us now is the governor of Montana, Brian Schweitzer. Governor Schweitzer, thanks very much for your time today, sir. It's good to see you. Great to be back, Rachel. Uh, can you give us any update on the, uh, the extent of the damage? We heard 25 miles downstream from Exxon tonight. We heard 40 miles from the EPA. What's your understanding? Uh, hell, nobody knows. Uh, they flow in the river. I flew the river, and from an airplane, you can barely see any oil at all. You can't, you can't see what's happening um, on those lowlands, those riparian areas. What happened was the river was crested. It was at flood stage when the pipe burst. Now the river is coming down, and those areas that are outside the river channel are now losing the water because it's draining back into the river or it's infiltrating and what's left behind is this black goo. They tell us that they flow in the river, but the river's too high to put boats on, so they tell us the furthest we've seen it downstream is 25 miles. Well, that river's running at 7 miles per hour, and, and with all of those profits that ExxonMobil has, they haven't bought a $2 calculator to know that 48 hours, it's running at 7 miles per hour. That's enough to get it to the North Dakota border, and uh, we are now much more than 48 hours, and yet they say, well, it could only have gone 25 miles. Well, of course, oil floats on top of water. Water's moving down very quickly, so it's moving uh, along. Some of that oil has moved as far as the Missouri River confluence at the North Dakota border. Are you satisfied with how ExxonMobil has responded to the leak since they found out about it? Do you think that a company with as many resources as they have uh, should be able to do more than they are doing? 
Well, you know, uh, uh, Reagan famously said that we will trust but verify. But when the president of this pipeline company came out during the first 24 hours and said, it's only gone 10 miles and there's no damage to wildlife, that was, that, that was leaving us with just verify and verify. So it is the Montana Department of Environmental Quality, EPA. Yeah, we're working with ExxonMobil. They will ultimately pay for all of this. They told me today that they would. But just a year and a week ago, I called in all of the agencies and state government, and I said, okay, let's have a mock drill right now. What happens if a pipeline bursts, an oil pipeline bursts in the Yellowstone River right now? What agency's in charge? Who pays for it? Where are the resources? And I was assured that these private pipeline companies and oil companies, they all work together, and they strategically place equipment uh, around the country near these pipelines. And when there's an emergency, they all come together, and they work together until the disaster is fixed. Nope, didn't turn out that way. Actually, the crew came in from Salt Lake City. Equipment has come from the coast. We waited a couple of days until we had any kind of a boat with the crew that could get on the river. And so if you wait long enough, this oil will dissipate. And, of course, the interest of the state of Montana to protect this river and the wildlife is not perfectly aligned with ExxonMobil, whose primary interest is to protect the liability for their shareholders. What do you attribute the distance between what you were told during that drill and the way that it worked out? Were people just flat out lying about their degree of readiness so that they'd get a thumbs up to keep doing what they were doing? Or is this something that uh, is this something where uh, it, it could be better regulation? Is this something where the mistakes were unforeseeable? What, what explains that, do you think? All of the above and older technology. This pipeline is a 20-year-old pipeline. We no longer lay pipelines in rivers like this one is installed. We no longer have a pipeline that's just five feet into the sediment at the bottom of a river. If you're building new pipelines, the uh, protocol today is that you drill horizontally 25 feet below the riverbed so that even if it were to burst, it's not introduced to the river. I asked them today specifically, if you replace this silver tip uh, pipeline, are you going to horizontally drill under the river? And I wasn't sure exactly what the answer was. Uh, they were engineers that sounded a lot like lawyers. <laughs> The effects of these kinds of spills uh, can last years. Of course, that, that depends in part on how good the cleanup effort is, uh, but also how bad the damage is from the outset. Do you have any concern about ExxonMobil sticking around as long as it has to to clean up Montana and clean up this river and help those who've been hurt by this? I told him today that the cleanup will be done when the client, the state of Montana, the people of Montana, and the wildlife of Montana in that Yellowstone River decide that cleanup is done. It won't be decided by ExxonMobil, and it won't be decided by bureaucrats in Washington, D.C. When we decide the cleanup is done, it's done. And I can tell you this, I'm the only soil scientist in America that's a governor, and I'm going to be on this like smell on a skunk until it's fixed. Montana Governor Brian Schweitzer, thank you for your time tonight, sir, and, and good luck dealing with this big Exxon mess you got on your hands. Thank you. Thanks.